I exchanged concept art with Trent from Miscast, and I ended up making what might be my favorite thing I've ever made. Hey guys, welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. When Trent reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to collaborate on something, I jumped at the opportunity. Trent is a consummate professional in terms of videography and he's got such a creative approach to making projects and terrain and he's one of my favorite creators out there. So I was super excited to work with him. Trent had an idea that we'd exchange concept art and then each build something from the art the other guy provided. So I drew something up, I sent it over to Trent and what he sent me back was not one drawing, but six. Um, show off. Now each one of these drawings could have made a good build, but one of them in particular really spoke to me, and that's this one here. So an idea popped into my head right away to do this sort of filthy canal with industrial structures looming over it and chains dangling and things like that, and I'll show you what I did. So I started my build planning out the main level on a piece of medium chipboard, one foot by one foot. I decided very early on that I wanted the piece to be restricted in size, one foot deep, one foot long, and one foot high. This would allow me to fit it on the shelf behind my hobby area and keep things nice and structured for the build. Now before I cut this foam, I'm going to switch my X-Acto knife. This is very important because a sharp blade is essential to a clean cut. If you have a hot wire foam cutter, you can ignore this step, but here in Eric's Hobby Workshop, while you guys are partying, we study the blade, so we do it old school. To trace my pattern onto this piece of chipboard, I use an X-Acto knife and poke these little holes in the corner, and then transfer that on with a piece of pencil. Nice and simple. And then with my super sharp blade, keeping things as neat as I can, I make some nice cuts. And those line up fairly well. It's alright, we'll fix it later with some sandpaper and some spackle. I glue these together with some Gorilla Glue, which is the best glue for foam and I totally recommend it. And then once I've got my layers together, stick them on there and I flip it over so I can stack some books on the top. And this is a good opportunity to show the world that you are a well-read individual by putting your picture-heavy books on top of there. Kindle users BTFO, am I right? So yeah, I stack a higher area up at the back because I decided I want to have a little sort of storm drain slash culvert draining into this little canal in the center here. And so what I'm doing here is I'm cutting myself a piece of culvert, but also a tube that's going to make the basis of one of my structures. It's going to be two tubes together like this. Next I'm going to use this piece. This is a piece that's been kicking around my bits box for over a year now. It's actually a piece of a water gun, and the other half of it I used on the first project that I made on this channel, which is this bad boy right here. Fits together like that. Pretty cool, eh? Things come in full circle. Always save your bits. You'll never know when something's going to come in handy. So I put that on a little block of foam, and I put it on there, and then I just use some more of these little blocks to block in and try to visualize the shapes I'm going for here. This is usually a pretty helpful step. Having some extra shapes to play around with usually a good idea. Next I'm going to cover this tube with some of that brown paper packing tape you might have seen me use before in previous videos. This is to cover that spiral pattern on the tube and also give some little seams that are going to be a nice little detail later on. And using some more of that Gorilla Glue, I stick those two together. This stuff dries so strong guys, you gotta try it. I'm also using little cubes of foam to reinforce the water gun here, which will also give a wider surface area for me to glue that down. That's a pretty useful technique that you can use in a lot of different applications. With that done, I glue that onto the tubes. I wonder how Trent is doing with the drawing I sent him right now. Trent has been putting together a series called The Nurgle Diaries, which chronicles his quest to put together a Nurgle army for Warhammer Fantasy. So every model in Trent's army is a conversion. He's built everything himself with a combination of sculpting things himself, 3D printing, kit bashing, and it's just a totally unique force. And it's really cool to try to think of something that he doesn't have when he's got everything but the kitchen sink in his army already. So I thought of this idea of 
a sort of wagon that had been built up higher and higher until it's improbably magically stacked on the still small footprint and it would act as sort of a large vehicle slash centerpiece something that goes with his army but also has its foot in the terrain arena and I thought that would be something really fun that Trent might enjoy building. So if you want to see Trent's take on my concept make sure you go over to his channel after you're done with this video and give it a look. For the other side I'm going to start with another tube like structure and then I'm going to add sort of a crane to it with some bits from my bits box. I'm going to use this bit, which is the cab of a truck at the sort of Hot Wheels scale. And then this piece, which is a doohickey from the bottom of a Barbie stage that I took apart in a previous video. You can check that video out here if you're interested. So I glue those together in a way that looks cool and somewhat functional. And next I'm using some pieces of foam core to make a little shanty type structure. These things go together really quickly, you don't have to be too accurate when you're measuring them, and they add some nice shapes to your build pretty easily. Next I'm using some of these plastic pipes, there's a link for these in the description. They're super useful, super versatile pipes, but if you look inside there you'll see they're not actually a pipe, so you can't like pour water through them or anything, which is kind of weird, they're just a child's building toy. But anyways, these things are great. Next with another piece of foam core, I'm cutting a shape that'll go over the top and snugly fit down as sort of an upper deck to this structure. I wanted this structure to be sort of top heavy feeling, like anywhere you were underneath it, it's looming over you. And that's something that I think is a really cool shape that I don't have enough buildings like. So that's what I was going for here really. I make another shanty like structure for the top to put on top of that rough edge of my squirt gun, making sure to make it the same height as the tops of the tubes there so it would be a uniform platform on the top. And then I glue some pipes in to add a quick bit of detail to the side. Here you can see I'm cutting some strips of chipboard, we'll use those in a moment. Back to the other side here, we're going to add another platform of foam board. I cut that into sort of an interesting shape and then I glue those to some little beams that I made out of a chipboard on a previous project that I had kicking around. These are just three strips of chipboard similar to the ones you saw me cutting a moment ago, but you can check out the video that I made them in here if you're interested. Next I use some of this Plastruck Diamond Plate Plastic Card. This stuff is really great for adding industrial texture quickly and easily and adds a nice variation to some of the pieces. Using those pieces of chipboard, I'm cladding the edges and then applying a piece of sculptor's mesh, I glue down a texture to the opposite platform. I'm sprinkling a little bit of baking soda or bicarbonate of soda, which dries with a nice crusty texture and also helps the glue to bond instantly, which allows me to not glue my fingers to it, which is always a plus. Next I'm adding a facing to one of my buildings, again using chipboard. You can see I cut out the doorway before I put it on. Just going quickly here, adding bits of detail, bits of pipes, and here's an interesting trick. When you have a floating pipe, you can use a little barrel and glue it in to create more points of contact. This piece isn't going to have a base of its own, so those extra points of contact make the pipe nice and stable. Next, using some drywall compound watered down with a little bit of water, I smooth this mixture onto all the edges which will fill some gaps and allow me to sand it smooth later. I use a piece of masonite because I decided the chipboard is wildly insufficient for the resin pour that I'm about to do. And once again I pile some books on there. Here's another funky looking piece of pipe. It's always nice to have pipes going over the walkways, I find. That adds a nice detail. Next I cut some F-shaped pieces of chipboard and glue those together. I make a funky looking crane-like support that's inspired by the reference image. Next I use a sanding block to sand this base piece smooth. You don't have to worry about getting it too smooth in between the layers because in real life concrete has layers. So using that extra bit of tube we cut off before, I measure a circle onto the wall and hack away a little circle. Then I trace that onto some granny grating. This is a mesh that's available at craft stores. I cut out half of the rungs to get a bigger grid than it originally comes in. 
fill some black into that black hole in the back because it'll be hard to paint later and glue that on there. This leaves you with a nice sewer grate. Nice. Next, I'm going to mix up some grey paint with a little bit of Mod Podge and blast that all over my base here to seal it and also to add some texture. While it's still wet, I take a brush and I stipple all over everything to give it a coarse texture and make sure to eliminate all those brush strokes that were on there before. I come in with a lighter coat of grey and then come in with dark streaks coming from the top. This is going to give the concrete a more natural look as we add more washes and grime to it. I paint the canal a dark gray green, which is the color of sort of a murky polluted runoff, but nothing too bright and green. I don't want it to look like ooze, just dirty water. Next I use some tile grout and mixing the tile grout with brown paint and sprinkling it on the wet paint, I create a grimy crusty look inside the sewer pipe. That worked pretty well black wash to dirty up the concrete a little bit more. And next I come in with a dirty green brown and do a nice water line on there. This is gonna really sell how filthy this water is supposed to be. Add a little bit in the pipe as well for good measure. Nice. Next I take some styrene bits and I hot glue them to the edges. This is gonna be the dam for the resin pour I'm about to do. And because I am not messing around, I'm also putting duct tape on top of that to make sure that I get a nice seal. You really don't want to have a resin leak. It's one of the worst things that can happen to you. Resin is so sticky forever and it's just so horrible. So I really take my time and I seal all the edges and then, you know, I just hope for the best. So I've actually never done a large pour like this with an edge that I want to peel away later. I've done big pours but they were always in an organic shape like a lake or something and they had their own boundaries that you didn't have to remove. So I'm not really familiar with mold release agents and I heard you could just use canola oil. Didn't work. Anyways, the resin that I'm using here is called EasyCast and one thing that I've learned about it is you must warm it in water beforehand. So that's what this little hot tub is here for these two VIPs. They're just getting to know each other while they come up to temperature. And in the meantime, I'm going to mix some dirty greenish brown dark pigment that I'm going to use to tint my resin. I'm just using Games Workshop paints here because I've used them before. You don't you need very much paint and I didn't want to experiment with a new technique when I know something is going to work and then I have less things that are variables that could go wrong. So I got a nice resin pour in there. This is always a nerve wracking, but also very satisfying step. I make sure to pour it from fairly high up, which reduces the bubbles and get it into all the corners, which you don't really have to do because it's self leveling. It does get very, very flat on its own and will seep given enough time. But here I'm just scooping a little bit into the mouth of that pipe with a popsicle stick to get a little bit of a wetness effect in there. And there it is, dried pretty well. You can see that despite all my caution, there was still a resin leak out the bottom here, which could have been much worse. So you know what, I'll take it. You know, being a patron of the arts has long been one of the coolest things that you can do, but it used to be reserved for the leisure class, the billionaire class, the 1%. But through the magic of big tech and the internet, we have democratized the process with something called Patreon. And Patreon is a cool thing where for a low price per month, you can be a big brain legend at all the dinner parties and impress people with your good taste and magnanimity by supporting your favorite creators and enabling the art and the consumable content online that you enjoy to be produced. So get in on the ground floor by clicking in the link in my description box and go over to my Patreon and sign up for one of the highest tiers. You know, I really appreciate the heck out of every, each and every patron I have and uh, you guys you guys make the wheels go round. What can I say? Love you guys. Uh, back to it. So next I'm going to make a third structure that's going to go on the raised part at the back. Following the same steps as before, I make a little shanty and a little platform, cutting out some windows. And this gets me a nice sort of residential improvised look to contrast nicely with the more industrial aspects. 
gluing that all together. And I use a block of foam to quickly get a nice window hanging out there. And then just clad the edges with chipboard to flesh out that shape a little bit more. I give this one sort of a diving board type shape. This is another weird shape that's just kind of a cool building that I don't really have anything like in my collection yet, so let's go with it. I'm rolling up some corrugated cardboard inside that Pringles tube there to give it some stability. And now I'm just going around to all the buildings, adding little pieces of corrugated paper and little bits of chipboard here and there, and just trying to add an extra level of detail and cover up some of those foam seams that give the telltale look of something that's made out of foam and not made out of rusty metal. And I make a little door here and there with a few strips of cardboard, just keeping it simple. Next I'm going to use some thin gauge green garden wire. Twisting a couple strands of this together, I'm going to run some cable-y wire bits around my pieces. This really gives a sense of scale and gravity, the way they hang like that, and I just keep them in place with a dab of hot glue. Next I'm going to apply some glue into the corners, and then using my favorite product, sand, and a little bit of tile grout to add some grime and some dust and some detail to some of these flat surfaces that would collect debris and grime over the years. Next with Mod Podge, I'm just going to paint over all the paper bits. This is going to seal them for the next step, which is priming. And any watery washes that we use are not going to swell the cardboard because they're nice and sealed in by that Mod Podge. With those things primed black and painted brown, I then dry brush some silver on there. And once that silver is dry brushed, I make a nice rust wash with some yellow, some red, some burnt sienna and I just kind of slather that on everywhere. It's going to dry in really weird patterns and give this nice flaky variation of color across everything. And it dries a lot more subtle than it looks right now. But this is the, where the cool part of the technique comes in. We use some of this masking fluid, which is a latex liquid. And then with a corner of a kitchen sponge, we dab off some of that latex and then Put little patches of latex all over the areas that we're going to paint in the next step. I'm trying to keep the pattern natural and random, rotating the sponge so we don't get the same pattern everywhere. And then we're going to paint some flat paint over top of it. Once my paint is dry, I come in with a stiff toothbrush and scrub away the paint and the chipping fluid underneath, creating a nice convincing chipping effect. As you can see, it's dried like a sticky, stretchy substance. It comes off easily. Next, I come in with some burnt umber and do some nice long streaks. I layer these up with a heavy wash of burnt sienna and then a lighter wash of orange to get that fading, rusty streak effect. That just looks amazing. I paint the pieces of concrete that are exposed that were painted metal in the previous step. And then I give everything a nice dark filthy wash. This is going to look like black mold and oil. And with this final dark wash to tie everything together, I'm going to call this project done. So with the build complete, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to show Trent. Um, hang on. How do I turn on my camera? <laughs> Uh, there's like um, uh, where your name is above that. Turn on video. camera button. Let's go with that. All right. What do you got for me? Uh, <laughs> I'm I think so I have excited. to bring the computer to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Oh, see man. Oh, dude, the rust effect on that. There we oh, go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. You've outdone yourself, man. Thank you. Uh, Let me take you on the, the full tour here. Yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you.
man, you've really outdone yourself. You'll have to watch my video to find out my techniques. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's great. Well, I won't take up much more of your time. Well, I do. For sure. Cool. Cool. I have to get back to editing. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that collaboration as much as I did. I had a ton of fun making it, and I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Make sure you go over to Trent's channel, Miscast, and check out what he did with the concept art that I gave him, because it's really, really cool, and uh, I couldn't be happier with what he came up with, um, and you don't want to miss it. So go check that out. And if you want to support the channel, there are Amazon affiliate links in the box below, as well as a link to my Patreon, where we have a Discord server, and there's some early videos, and some Patreon-only content, and behind-the-scenes photos, and some cool stuff there that you might not want to miss as well. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.